Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spot. Today I'm going to be showing you how to code the classic snake game using Python and its Pygame model. Remember that if you have not installed Python, Pygame, or any text editor, I have some tutorials for both Mac and Windows users. So, yeah, let's start coding. Okay, guys, so let's start by creating a new file. I'm going to name it snake.py. And now we're going to import the models that we're going to use for this game. So let's start by importing Pygame. Also, we are going to need the math model. So import math. Also the random model, the time model, and the sys model. Okay, now I wanna create a function that I'm gonna name main. Basically, we're going to write all of our code right here. We're gonna we're gonna call other functions from here. We're gonna create objects from here. So basically, it's our main function. Now, at the end of this script, we need to call this main function, and that's it. So, as you know, when we are using Pygame, we need to initialize it. So let's start by typing pygame.init. Now let's create our screen. So I'm gonna call it screen, but you can call it however you want. So it's going to be pygame.display.set mode. And as you know, we need to pass here a tuple with the dimensions of our screen. So I like to create some constants for this. So I'm gonna create our width constant that is going to be 640 and our height constant, which is going to be also 640. And we're gonna pass width and height here. Okay, now let's set the screen caption. So go ahead and type pygame.display.set caption. I'm gonna use snake. Now we can create our main loop. So main loop. If you haven't seen my other videos or you don't know what a main loop is, it's basically where the game is going to update constantly. And as I've said, this is always the same, so it's not really that hard. So go ahead and type while true, then for event in pygame dot event dot get. If event inside the for loop, if event dot type equals equals pygame dot quit. Then we're gonna use our sys model, so sys, and we're gonna call the function exit. So that's it. Now at the end of the main loop, outside this for loop, we're going to type the following: pygame dot display dot update. So this is responsible of updating the screen, our game screen. Okay, so once we have typed this, we can go ahead and run the file to see our screen. So as you can see, we have our game screen with the snake caption and it's all working correctly. So let's go ahead and create a, a new class, a class that is going to be responsible of painting or drawing our background. So I'm gonna call it background and it's only going to have one method and that will be paint or draw and we're gonna receive self as a parameter as you know and the surface. This surface is going to be our screen. This is where we want to draw or paint our background. Okay, so inside this method, we want to do the following. But before we go ahead and code this, this function, I want to quickly explain you something. Okay, so our screen is going to look something like this. We're going to have some squares, and our snake is going through those squares, right? Something like this. Now, you can paint the background as you want. However, I want to paint it as a chessboard pattern. So as you know, chess usually comes like this, 
black, white, black, white, black, white, and so on, so on. I want to do the same for our snake game, but using green. So it will be something like this, light green, then dark green, then light green, then dark green, and so on, so on, doing the chessboard pattern, right? So I'm going to quickly explain you how are we going to do this. Okay, so we're going to start by painting our whole screen of one of the colors that we're going to use. So let's say I'm going to paint it with the dark green. So we're going to do something like this, right? And then we're going to loop. So we're going to do a double for loop to loop through all of our columns and then through all of our rows, right? In order to paint with the light green. So something like this. And we're going to do the chessboard pattern. Okay, so just before we start coding, I want you to see that the color of the last column, so in this case, the dark green, is going to be the same color as the first color of our next row. And this is true for each color of our last column. So in this case, light green, and in this case, dark green again, and so on, so on. I know this might seem as something not so important, but it is. And it's something that we need to take into account when we are doing our code. Okay, so we're gonna start by creating some new constants. The first one is going to be pixels, and we're gonna set it equal to 32. These are going to be the dimensions that each square of our board is going to have. The second one is going to be squares, and these are going to be the number of squares we have. So it's going to be width divided by pixels. Now you can use height here, it's going to be the same as we're working with the square screen. And make sure to type the int word right here in order to make sure this is an integer. Okay, the next constants that we're going to create are going to be our colors. I, I already copied them. So these are going to be the, the, the two colors that I'm gonna use. You can, you can pause the video and copy them, or you can use whatever color you want. Okay, so let's start coding our draw function now. Okay, so as I told you, the first thing that we're going to do is going to paint our background of one of these two colors that we just created. So go ahead and type surface, and we're referring to this surface. Got a fill. And right here, we're going to pass one color. I'm gonna use the first one, so BG1. And I'm gonna actually show you how this works. So let's go to our main function right here. Let's create a, an instance of, of this class. So I'm gonna call it background background equals background so this is our class this is our object and right here inside this main loop at the beginning of the main loop we're gonna type background dot draw which is the function that we just created and we're gonna pass the screen as our surface so go ahead and save and run the file to see what happens Okay, so as you can see, we have our screen filled with that color. Awesome. So let's go ahead and continue coding this function. Now we're going to create a counter. We're going to set it equal to zero. This is going to be the responsible of knowing when to paint a square of the second color. Now let's go ahead and do the double for loop. So we're going to loop through all the rows. So for row in range we're gonna put the number of squares we have and then for call in range also the number of squares we have and inside this double for loop we want to use an if statement to know exactly what square we need to paint with our second color so go ahead and type if counter model to equals equals zero so we're basically just checking if our counter is even, so this counter, 
and we're going to type the following. So pygain the draw dot rect rect stands for rectangle as we're drawing a square is the same. So the arguments for this function are going to be surface, then the color, so that will be bg2 or your second color, and then we need to create the rectangle or the square. So the first argument of the rectangle is going to be the x position, so that will be our column times the number of pixels. The second argument is going to be the y position, the y starting position, so it's going to be row times pixels. Then we're going to pass the width, so that will be pixels, and then the height, and that will be pixels also. And that's it. Now outside this if statement, we want to increment our counter by 1. Now I'm going to run the file. This is not totally finished. We're missing something. But I just want you to see how we're going. So go ahead and save and run the file. Okay, so as you can see, we haven't finished, as I told you, because we're filling the complete column with one color. And we don't want that, right? We want the chess pattern and the chessboard pattern. Now, we're missing that last thing that I explained you when I was explaining the algorithm, and that was that the last color, so the, the, the color of the last column, has to be the same color as the one of the next row, as the first one of the next row. So let's go ahead and code that. Okay, so we wanna, we wanna start by checking if we are currently on the last column. So how do we do that? We can use an if statement. So if column, so this column is equal to the number of squares we have. So remember our constant minus one. And why minus one? Because column starts at zero, right? So we need to subtract one from our squares. So if this is true, that means that we we are not we are not incrementing our counter. So we can put a continue. This continue is going to will actually continue with our loops and it will never reach the counter. So that's one way to do it. The other way is to put if columns is not equal to the to the squares, to squares minus one, so basically if we are not in the last column, well, increment the counter. Otherwise, it will never enter this if statement. We are not incrementing the counter. So you can use um, whatever code you want. I'm gonna go with this one because it's shorter. I'm gonna save and run the file for you to see the final background. Okay, so as you can see, we managed to do it. This is awesome. I absolutely love it. Um, we have our pattern, and um, our chessboard pattern with our green. But as you know, you can use any color you want. I'm gonna go with green. Or you can use whichever pattern you want. But I absolutely love this one. So let's go ahead and continue. So now we're gonna start coding our snake class. We're not actually going to code movement yet. That is going to be in the next video. And we're also going to code our Apple class. So by the end of this video, you might have a screen with the background that we just coded and two points, one representing the snake and another one representing an apple. So let's go ahead and code it. So let's start by creating our Apple class. So go ahead and type class Apple. Inside this class, we're gonna do the init method. So go ahead and type dev underscore underscore init, init underscore underscore. If you don't know what an init method or a constructor method is, it's just basically where we create our Apple, our object. So go ahead and pass the self parameter. Okay, so inside this init method, we're gonna type the following. So self.color, and this refers to the color of our apple. I'm gonna go with red. So I'm gonna put red and I'm gonna create that constant in our color constants. So red is going to be 255, 0, and 0. And that's it.
Now I want to create a new method inside our Apple class. I'm going to call it spawn. This method is going to be responsible of changing the Apple's X and Y coordinate. So go ahead and type self.posix. This is going to represent our X coordinate. And we're going to use the random model and the random range method in order to assign a random number to this X position. So we're going to go from zero. The number is going to go from zero to width with a step of pixels. Why do we need this step? Because we want the apple to be exactly on a square, right? Now we're going to do the same with our y coordinate or y position. So random dot run range. We're going to go from zero to height. And we're going to use pixels as the step. Now, before we create the last method, we need to call this method inside our init method, because as soon as we create an apple, we want it to spawn, right? So go ahead and type self.spawn, and that's it. Okay, now let's go ahead and create our last method. It's going to be the draw method. So go ahead and type def draw with self and surface as parameters. So basically, this method is going to be responsible of drawing the apple on the surface. So inside this method, go ahead and type pygame.draw.rect. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the apple a rectangle, but you can go or you can try doing it as a circle. It's a little bit more complicated, and that's why I'm using rectangle. So remember, we need to pass the surface, then the color, so self.color, then a rectangle. So the first argument is going to be the x position, and that will be the self.posix. Then the y position, so self.posy. Then the width, and that will be pixels. And then the height, and that will be pixels as well. Okay, so that's our Apple class for now. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new Apple to see if it actually works. So inside the main function, I'm going to create a new object. Right. So remember, this is the class and this is the object. And I'm going to actually put a comment here telling these are my objects. Now, we want to go inside the main loop in order to draw this apple. Now, you want to make sure you are drawing it just after you draw the background. Because if you draw it before, you'll never see your apple. Right. So go ahead and type apple.draw and we're going to pass screen as a surface. I'm going to save and run the file. Okay, so as you can see, we have our apple. It is spawned right here. I'm going to run it again to see if it spawns in, in another square. Awesome. So as you can see, we have finished for now our apple class. So let's go ahead and code our snake class. Okay, so this is going to be pretty similar as the Apple class. So go ahead and type class snake. We're going to create also an init method. And inside the init method, we're going to type the following. So self.color equals blue. Let me just create this color. So I'm going to go with this one. This is a dark blue. You can, you can choose the color you want for, for your snake. Now, we, we want to we wanna do the same as we did here with the coordinates. However, we're going to do it in the init method. And this is because we don't need to respawn the, the snake. We need to respawn the apple each time we eat an apple, but the snake, we don't need it. So we need, we need to put the X and Y position just when we start the game, right? So go ahead and type self dot, and actually I'm gonna call it head x, and this is going to be the same random dot rand range from zero to width with a step of pixels and self dot head y 
random random range from zero to height with a step of pixels and that's it we're gonna create our draw method so remember we need self and surface as parameters this is always the same so pygame dot draw dot rect we're gonna use the surface self dot color here the rectangle is going to be the same self dot head x then self dot head y the width is going to be pixels and the height is going to be pixels as well so yeah that was pretty simple it's going to be a little bit more complex when we code the movement and all that but that's gonna be in the next video let's go ahead and create our snake so let's go to our main function let's create the object and let's draw it right here Let's pass the screen as a surface, save and run the file. Okay, so as you can see, my snake is kind of blue, it's a dark blue, and the apple is red. Now, this is totally random, so if I run the file again, both things, both objects are gonna be in totally different positions. Awesome. Yeah, guys, so this is going to be for today. In the next video, we're going to code the snake movement maybe we'll add some collisions but yeah if you if you like this video if you're liking the channel please leave a like please comment and please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching